Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Victims of Cherry Tree Lane shooting identified. Opposition leader suggests Prime Minister exclude himself from election race. And later in sports, West Indies remain confident of series win over South Africa after drawn opening test. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pula and here are the details. A curfew has been imposed in Cherry Tree Lane, four paths, Clarendon. This after eight people were shot and killed in the community Sunday night. Among the dead is a seven-year-old boy. The first incident happened at a bar where a birthday party was being held shortly after 9 p.m. According to reports, three men in a white Toyota motor car drove up and opened fire before fleeing the area. However, it did not end there. The gunmen drove to a nearby location where a group of people were playing bingo and opened fire at the group. Eight people were killed and several others wounded. Among the dead are... Cavell Daly, 27, Diamond Bennett, 50, Aidan Bartley, 7, Errol Stewart, 68, Courtney Messam, and a woman identified only as Margaret. A man whose girlfriend was killed in the incident told TVG News he had spoken with her minutes before the shooting. And by the time I reach over, one of my friends called me and said, I'm here going to the again, Eileen. So same time I call her phone, but then I get to hear one of her friends and say, then kill her friend. I say, kill your friend. Kill who? Who then kill? And like, like she said, she knew Margaret. Like I said, then kill Margaret. I said, wait. And she said, don't alien. At the same time, what come on alien? At the same time, police them they reach. Me come, me come to one, one youth right there. So, me see one next youth up on the bar. Me see one little baby youth. And by the time police them come and say, we have to leave. And just stand whatever. Me see them grown from the back again and shoot man. You're right, and I'm not nervous. The community is struggling to come to terms with the senseless loss of lives. First, this ever happened around here. First, this ever happened in a lifetime. And right now, you're, you're, mess, you're mess. It's supposed to be messed up right now. Very, very, very much messed up right now. Because it's in spite of your girlfriend, there are many other persons. Yeah, because you know. most of them, most of them are my friends. Because all the youth, when I youth were dead, I'm a friend, real friend. I like, we we'll grew up together. We we'll always apart, close. Yo, much of all meditation right now, right? You know. So you could have been among them, them yeah. because everybody link up. Yeah, we come one time we link up and just have a drink and whatever. Now our reporter Dwayne Anderson has been at the scene of the deadly attack and filed this report. Cherry Tree Lane District in Clarendon, a relatively unknown community for most Jamaicans, but now it will be known by many people and for the wrong reasons. It all started around 9 p.m. last night while residents were gathered here at this car wash and ball field, you know, just celebrating a birthday party, having a drink and eating some food and also playing a game of bingo. But several men invaded the community. We understand about five of them, heavily armed, came in and exclaimed they're planning to kill everybody in the community. They then opened gunfire on the persons gathered here. In the end, when the shooting subsided, 17 people were shot. Yes, 17. Eight died, nine were injured. They were in hospital battling for their lives. I spoke with one of the relatives of the deceased, of some of the deceased. No, I wouldn't expect nothing like that. Nothing. Everybody in the community, everybody work. Everybody work. So, I mean, we don't expect nothing like that. Has there been any issues in the community recently, you know, like shootings, this, you know, disagreements that you think could have caused this? No. No, everybody just peaceful. How are your, you and your relatives trying to cope right now? How to manage, if that is possible? Right now, we don't know we have a manage. I feel it. We don't know we have a manage. My mother, we know she lose her belly pain. Her husband dead in her hand. So, something we can't come out and nobody doing that. That is a scar for life. 
No residents admit this community has had its fair share of crime and violence in the past, but for the past few months, things have been relatively calm. It is why they are unable to come to terms with this deadly gruesome attack. Now, since morning, the police have been back in the area, along with other stakeholders, trying to speak with residents, comfort them. But as one relative of the deceased told me, there are no words that can comfort her at this time. Reporting from Cherry Lane in Clarendon, I'm Dwayne Anderson for TVJ News. And head of crime DCP Fitz Bailey says the gunman used high-powered weapons. He was speaking at a press conference a short while ago. DCP Bailey says the police are following a number of theories in the matter. At this time, I am unable to get into those details. But I guarantee you that we will ensure that the perpetrators are brought to justice. We are confident in the ability of the law enforcement agencies, and we are following some significant lead. This incident is so tragic. It's a, it's a significant attack on, I consider, the state. And as I said yesterday, its, it's intention is to create intimidation and fear within the community. We have imposed a curfew in the area, and we will be engaged in a lot of opportunity, um, activities, activities to ensure that those who are responsible are brought to justice. Meanwhile, weighing in on the incident, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says this is a sad day for all Jamaicans. He was speaking also at the press conference. First, let me begin by extending my deepest condolences to the families and loved ones of those whose lives were brutally snuffed out in this dastardly incident. I feel the pain and uh, share the distress of the families, the loved ones, the communities, and indeed the entire Jamaica. And I also pray for the recovery of those who were injured. To other news now, for the second time in a week, the Malvern to Santa Cruz Main Road in St. Elizabeth has been blocked. This time by residents of Mount Plymouth, Smoothland, in the parish were still without power. The blockade resulted in significant disruptions to traffic with many commuters forced to find alternative routes, but the residents say they are frustrated. People keep calling the company and they make statement that no, Sumula not on the list. And everybody that have light bill get return light bill. So we're paying for what we don't get. What we don't get, a new generator and the generator burn up my fan. I went to Kingston today, eight days and buy a fan and it's still in the box because I can't plug it in. Look how me look old. Me have to get one night I will sheet a fan because heat a kill me, no you see. Me have an AC unit in my room and two fan and me have to sleep in a heat bunny. It's not nice. This is coming like some community where wire drop down power and vehicle are driving. Them communities they get back light in and around the areas. And we don't have that up there so. And we can't get no life. Why we can't get no life? It's a brand. Can tell look like we no have no, we no MP. And and it's like we no recognize. See the sign they saw. Smooth and mumple mouth. And they call. We are pay with light bill and all of that. So we want some assistance and we want light. We don't have no MP. We want some light. We want light post. If I have a piece, now post and bring it come man. Meanwhile, the Jamaica Public Service Company says it is on track to restore power to all parishes except for sections of St. Elizabeth by today's deadline. Director of Co Corporate Communications, Winsome Callum, says work crews have had challenges accessing some communities worst affected by Hurricane Beryl. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return.
Welcome back to Primetime to the Midday News. As the election campaign heats up, opposition leader Mark Golding is suggesting that Prime Minister Andrew Holness should exclude himself from the race. He was addressing supporters in St. James Sunday night. Mr. Golding pointed to the non-certification of Mr. Holness's 2021 statutory declarations by the Integrity Commission, which he argues makes Mr. Holness ineligible to lead. A situation where this country is governed by a government which is not sending the right signals about integrity and honesty in public life within Jamaica and internationally. In its recent annual report, the Integrity Commission noted that eight politicians were being investigated for illicit enrichment. The Integrity Commission of the land has said that there are eight members of parliament under investigation for illicit enrichment. And we hear nothing from the Prime Minister and to, as to how that issue is to be addressed. Nobody has recused themselves from any committee as if anything is amiss. The Ministry of Health is reporting a sharp increase in COVID-19 cases. 176 cases were recorded in July, up from 152 in June, a 16% increase. But the figure could be higher formula for these types of detection is normally that for everyone you discover because persons take the time to visit a doctor to get tested there may be seven or eight in the population otherwise so so that is also a kind of established um, ratio um, whether it's 20 times that that would be much more severe but normally we work with seven to eight times um, of course covid displays itself with different levels of intensity. And the persons who tend to take action are the ones who are impacted most. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says Jamaicans should still practice COVID precautions. In particular, vulnerable groups, because that's where we're seeing, as we would know, the, the, the more severe impact, including, of course, the extreme being death. Older population, people with compromised immune systems, and we're taking the time to say to persons, vaccination is still available. You can access if you need, or at least get some advice from your doctor. And if you have symptoms, take the necessary precautions. Those protocols are established. I mean, by now, most people should know. But the reminder, I think, is important because we are seeing that, that, that there is an uptick. It's now time for the Business Minute. Toll operators at Trans Jamaican Highway says it made a higher profit of US 7 million US dollars in its second quarter ended June 2024. That's a 16% increase compared to the 6.03 million US dollars earnings in the comparative period ended June 2023. Trans Jamaican Highway says this was linked to lower finance costs and operating expenses. These results brought the company's six month profit up to 13.92 million US dollars versus 11.01 million US dollars last year. As for revenue, the company made 19.87 million US dollars in the quarter, compared with 18.22 million US dollars for the same period last year. The company says that there were increased traffic levels compared with last year, along with increased toll rates. Further afield, a former Twitter board member is suing the social media company now known as X for 20 million US dollars in pay. According to a lawsuit filed on Friday in California, Omid Kordestani claims Elon Musk refused to cash out more than 20 million dollars worth of shares. Kordestani joined Twitter's board in 2015, overseeing the sale of the company to Musk in 2022. So far, X has not responded to the lawsuit. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Nikinski Robinson. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, meteorologists are keeping a close watch on Cyclone 5 as it continues to strengthen. The system is expected to bring significant rainfall through Friday in Guadeloupe, St. Kitts and Nevis, Montserrat, Antigua and Barbuda, Anguilla, Saba, St. Eustatius, St. Martin, St. Barthélemy, the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. 
On the international scene, former President Donald Trump will hold a live conversation with Elon Musk today on X, formerly known as Twitter. The Tesla and SpaceX owner endorsed Trump for president shortly after a gunman attempted to assassinate the former president at a campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania last month. Musk said his conversation with Trump will be unscripted and no subjects will be off limits. He urged people to submit questions and comments under the chat. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Nikinski Robinson. We head to a quick break. When we come back, Renardo will have your midday sports reports.